Everybody and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is our big show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can pre-order by this weekend so you don't miss out on any of the comic goodness. Uh, we've got a big show this week, mm -hmm. a lot of really good books. Uh, a, a lot, lot of, of cool like, variants, too. A lot of yeah. really cool variants. Not a, a ton of like DC like number ones or anything like that, but when we get into the variants, there's a lot of really good stuff yeah. there. Don't forget to head over to infinityflux.net right now where you can follow along, you can place your order so you don't miss out on any of these books. And with all that being said, let's get into it. Starting with our featured comics and a big one to kick it off. Ultimate X Men number one. So this is the uh, you know the next Ultimate book, right? We're getting Ultimate Black Panther number one next week, and then this is the next number one to come out, um, written and drawn by Peach Momoko, and this follows Hisako Ichiki. She's a teenage girl. She just wants to live a normal teenage girl life, but in Japan, urban legends have sprung up that. Um, bring some unusual new powers with them. Now, I don't know. We were talking earlier. I don't know if, like, that's, like, going to be this world's version of mutants or if it's more supernatural than that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's, you know, we'll have to read this to find out. But we are going to meet Armor. You see her on the cover. And, of course, we know her from the current books. But there's also a new character named Maystorm. Uh, and this says a group of new Ultimate X-Men, the likes of which you've never seen before. So I'm assuming... I don't know about this issue, but I'm assuming we'll get some other new characters at some point or yeah. maybe ultimate versions of existing characters. I don't know. This one for me is the most unknown quantity, yeah. basically. We more or less knew what we were getting with Spider-Man. Black Panther seems like more or less standard Black Panther with a few differences, but this one seems the most different from the 616 stuff. Yeah, we're talking that like we've seen mutants in like uh, Ultimate Invasion and stuff. We've seen... Uh, Colossus, we've seen Magic, yeah. we've seen some of those, but uh, or uh, Sunfire too, I think was, was uh, one of them? I think he was yeah. one of them but, you know, this doesn't even say mutants in it, so what is this going to be? How is this tied in with all of the stuff? Uh, you know, is it something new? This is the one that's like I read the title Ultimate X-Men but this could be any number yeah. of, of stories. So. I was thinking maybe Armor played the Kitty Pride role and she went to New York. She's like, what am I going to go to New York to this school? And then that's mm -hmm. when we... I don't know. It's just a total guess. So, you know, we'll have to see. This actually comes out on March 6th. So we have about a month to wait before we figure out, but it should be interesting. So but it seems like this will be the first appearance of this new character, May, May, Sto May, May Storm. Storm yeah. We'll see her on some of the yeah. variants. Yeah, so this is our A cover by Peach Momoko. We have the uh, Betsy Cola Ultimate Special variant. So that's May Storm and right I think there. This features on more covers than Armor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, yeah. So we have that one. We have the Dike Ruan cover. Yeah, I really like that one. I like that design. Uh, I guess that's Armor's Armor back there. Yeah. We thought maybe it was a villain at first, but... Uh, the next there's... one kind of shows that that might be just Armor. Yeah, there's an Inhyuk Lee yeah, Armor cover. Uh, Mark Brooks has a cover, which looks really cool. So there's Mace, Storm, and Armor. Uh, Peach Momoko has another cover, and... Yeah, okay, that's it from Ultimate X-Men. And also, from one of the things I remember reading, that little thing she's holding is Armor. So oh. it's like... it's. Maybe not a power, but like something else. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, very weird. it's more like artifact based. Yeah, like. I have no idea. So, like I said, th this is the most unknown of all of them, but it should be interesting to find out. Maybe it's a cool new take. And didn't they knows? say we're getting five ultimate miniseries? Is that? What oh, I don't. Doing? I don't know. I think there's another. I think there's another one just called like Ultimate universe Ultimate or something universe or, coming yeah. after this which is which is kind of like your avengers book yeah. that gives you your iron man captain america getting out of the ice and that kind of stuff but i'm not i'm not too sure a lot of this i feel like is going to be the more we read the more you know it'll be cinched together yeah. we'll, we'll understand how this world yeah works. i do think it will start to coalesce and make sense as these books come out as we read them and as we get to more be fair, issues. for all of these we've really only had ultimate spider-man yeah uh, to see kind of everything outside of the Ultimate Invasion stuff. So, very yeah. cool. Well, speaking of Ultimate Spider-Man, we also have the third printing of number one. So, if you missed the first printing, you missed the second printing, it is coming out for a third printing, and this is the cover of number one by Sarah Pacelli. I think this one's awesome. Yeah, I really like that with the family in the background. Yeah. I love that Uncle Ben's there and the kids. And, and what I, what I think is cool is, like, it seems like 
we don't know yet, but it seems like obviously Mary Jane knows these Spider Man, but it seems like the kids are gonna know too. Yeah. But I don't think Uncle Ben's gonna know at least for a while because the future solicitations for like number four on the news it says like who is Ben wants to know who is Spider Man or something yeah. like that. So next up we have a new black label uh, Batman book. This is called The Batman First Night. Of course, the night is spelled with a K because Batman can't do it any other That's way. Right. Uh, this is going to be a three-issue miniseries uh, written by Dan Jurgens, who is, you know, one of the most classic writers, I think, mm. still working along with, like, Claremont and stuff. But Dan Jurgens is great. <laughs> uh, and the art is by Mike Perkins, which, uh, if you're not familiar with Mike Perkins' art, it is very, very realistic. Like, like photorealistic, like, yeah. Pretty photorealistic. Um, so it makes this really interesting. You can see this, like, how Batman looks like on the cover in the top right. Uh, that's kind of how the interior art looks. But this is definitely a black label book, uh, but we'll get yes. into that. So <laughs> uh, this takes place in 1939 uh, in America after World War One, and uh, a series of violent murders have occurred in Gotham. So this is back, you know, earliest days of Batman. Mm-hmm. This is putting, you know, the the real world historical, like when Batman came out, but Back then, it, it didn't really address, like, the world around him. It right. often was kind of in its own bubble or whatever. But in this, it's going to be that original, like, 39 Batman uh, transposed over the top of kind of real-world events. Um, but in this, there is a mass... Uh, of course, there's a mass vigilante they only know as the Batman. And I love the Bat-Man. Yeah. That's like, you know, that's that's... Uh, we don't know what he is. He's a bad man, not yeah. the Batman. So, uh, and there is uh, these attacks. Um, it seems weird because all the evidence points towards uh, the the uh, the bad guys being people who have already been convicted and sent to the electric chair. Oh. So Batman's trying to figure out. Okay, how did these people who are supposed to be dead? come back and uh, commit more terrible crimes. So all that's really cool. I believe this is actually a retelling of one of Batman's first stories. Like that was actually published. That was actually published, huh. but kind of modernized. Yeah. And, and Modernized, but not because it takes place in 1939. Like, yeah. I, I guess when you consider like modern art and yeah. modern, uh, it's, it's, I don't know. It's through a modern lens, I guess. Uh, but it sounds really cool. Now, when we were saying this is mature, we we previewed some a few pages, and this is like this is rough. You know, there's it's, a lot of uh, it's uh, violent. Uh, there's some violence. are detated for their heads <laughs> in this. Uh, so, but I know a lot of people like when you say black label, that's what they want from it. It's yeah. more like gritty, realistic. And this is that is what this mm-hmm. is. So I feel like a lot of people are really gonna like this. And with Dan Jurgens writing it, I, I think it's going to be great. He's one of my favorite Superman writers. Yeah. Just he, I put him like in the same level as like a Mark Wade. He's like yeah. when you need a guy to just tell a solid story who knows these characters. Yeah. Dan Jurgens is your guy. Mark Wade's your guy. Like those guys just know these characters for sure. So I think this is going to be really fun. I love this classic Batman look where his ears are kind of more yep. pointed away from each yep. other. And they do look like that in the book. That's I, what he looks like in I the book. I think he also has the purple gloves in this. Oh, nice. Which is the other, the other classic look. So we've got a few covers here. So this is our A cover by Mike Perkins. So this is your interior artist. We also have this Ramon Perez, which I guess is kind of an homage to the that early cover with the, the yellow light yeah. shining on him. And we also, I love this one. This is the Mark uh, Espinal pulp novel variant. Which kind of also gives you an idea of the tone they're setting for this. And I like the way it's distressed looking yeah. at everything. That looks very cool. It's very crime noir. Yeah. Next is the Savage Sword of Conan number one. So this is cool. So we have our Conan the Barbarian uh, ongoing series from Titan. And now we are getting... Uh, and, and that feels very classic. It feels very 70s Marvel Conan. And now we are getting a very... 70s feeling savage sort of conan like magazine let me this is going to be magazine size like the old school one was it's going to be all black and white like the original one was it's going to be a little bit more violent a little bit more adult a little bit more mature i should say i guess um but this is going to have a new conan uh, an epic conan story in it um there's there is going to be a solomon kane story in it written and drawn by patrick zercher we know that um 
uh, you know, Titan has uh, like the it's, license it's for a, a lot of it's these. It's the like, Robert E. Howard yeah, universe yeah. of characters. So Solomon Kane's our next one. There's going to be a prose story from Jim Zub, who is the writer of the Conan the Barbarian series right now. There's going to be art pinups and all kinds of stuff, just like the yeah, old very, school. Very classic. They looked at those old Savage Sword books and are like, we want all yeah, of Yeah, let's just do this. You know, let's just make new ones of these. So uh, if you're enjoying the, the, the main Conan the Barbarian series like we are, then you definitely won't want to miss this because I think it's going to be awesome. Some um, of my favorite uh, Conan stories are from Savage Sword, the classic yeah. Savage Sword, because they are a little bit more brutal mm-hmm. or a little bit more, like it says, savage yeah. in that way. So. Yeah, I regret not getting like the Savage Sword or Conan omnibuses because yeah. I have a lot of the Conan 70s Marvel Conan ones, but I don't have any of the Savage Sword and I'm regretting that now, but <laughs> I can have these instead, yeah. I guess. Uh, so this is our A cover by Joe Jusco. We have a... Uh, Zafino cover that one's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I love I love the images of like barbarians or or like a wolverine or like like warriors and stuff with like arrows sticking out. Yeah, super cool. But they're just like man, nah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> There's a von Fafner cover which looks really cool, and then there is a uh, Jusco. This is the uh, FOC reveal virgin variant of yeah. that A cover, which looks super cool. I am all for more Conan. Yes, especially like this kind of Conan, this classic just. Mm-hmm. The most barbarian of Conan's. Yeah, that's great. Next up, we have a new Miss Marvel miniseries. So we just had Miss Marvel, the new mutant. Mm-hmm. And now we have Miss Marvel, uh, Menace. Or Mutant, mutant Menace. Yeah. Uh, which I think this sounds really cool. And I like that they're doing, kind of handling this in miniseries formats. It's not an ongoing thing. But uh, in this one, this is written by Iman Vellani, who portrays uh miss marvel in the mcu but only her right yeah, yeah. before there was a the co-writer was a, a one of the producers or writers on miss marvel yeah but this it only has a Vellani listed as the main writer and she must have really proved herself of like we already know she's a like a super marvel oh fan. yeah she's yeah she's great but you know that doesn't always mean you have the best writing chops but right. i love that last series and i think this one's going to be great uh, so not a whole lot of information about this first issue. Uh, this art is by Scott uh, Godalewski, mm-hmm. uh, but in this it just says you know Miss Marvel is now kind of known as being a mutant. She's come out and been very like open about being a mutant, even though it's not a great time in the Marvel universe to Terrible be a mutant. Time. <clears throat> and the uh, the the community that really supported her as Miss Marvel may turn on her now that they know that she's a mutant. So that's all really cool, but I did a little research, looked ahead at future issues, and I'm super excited because it looks like the person that's going to maybe take advantage of this is the X-Men Zone Mojo with the Mojo verse and everything. I could see him wanting to make her some kind of reality star. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the hot new yeah. uh, mutant on the scene. So I, I love Mojo, and I think that's going to be really, really fun. Maybe throw some long shot in there, just just Please. For kicks. If you end up, we find out that Miss Marvel and Longshot become like best friends. Yeah. It'd just be the coolest <laughs> thing. Uh, but I, I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you like the previous one, uh, I think you're going to like this one. So we've got our A cover here, which uh, is by uh, Carlos Gomez, who is the artist of the, the previous one, yeah. series. So it's cool to see that he's still involved. Uh, we also have a Derek Chu variant. We have a Villa Lobos variant, which that looks a lot like a Mon Volani yeah. too, which is really fun. And I love her mutant suit. It really mm-hmm. harkens back to like some uh, new mutants, the black and yellow. It's a perfect blend of, yeah, classic black and yellow X-Men with her Miss Marvel suit. Yeah. yeah. We also have a Peach Momoko. There's a lot of Peach Momoko in this show. Yeah. And we have the Vincent Tini Stormbreakers variant. Maybe this is going to be the story where we learn what her mutants' powers are. Uh, they've uh-huh. been kind of teasing that through the last the last season. It'll come out someday. I, I don't think yeah. they're gonna just leave that. Like someday yeah. we're gonna find out. And next is uh, aliens, or I guess what if aliens? This is the first issue of what this new aliens? miniseries. What if aliens? What if aliens were real? I don't. They probably are. Um, this is written by Hans uh, Rodenoff, and the art is by uh, Gui Villanova. And the the what if of this is what if Carter Burke had lived? So Paul Reiser's character. In Alien and Aliens, uh, <clears throat> what if he lived? But what the cool thing is, is Paul Reiser and his son Leon are actually working on this with uh, with some writers and producers uh, like Adam Goldberg, Brian Volkweiss, and then, like I said, Hans Roldanoff 
Hans R- R- Rodianoff, I think. Rodianoff. Uh, yeah. Uh, for a journey back to Hadley's hope and the twisted escape of a man who should have died. So he did die. Spoiler alert for a 40 year old movie. He did <laughs> die in, uh, it was the second one, right? In Aliens, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but now we're going to find out what happens if he had not. So that uh, should be pretty cool. If you like the Aliens books, don't miss this one. Uh, so our A cover, we have an 80 Granoff variant. We have a Lucio Perillo variant there is a, a peach momoko variant yeah. she's really busy and then of course you can have a number one without a scotty young cover uh well, i guess we had the miss marvel she didn't have a scotty yeah. young cover maybe she'll come get one later but uh, i love uh all the little the little baby aliens just chasing them yeah i like also because it's like instead of alien it's aliens and he put multiple aliens on right this, so that's, yeah that's fun my next one i want what if uh the the what if thing is what if they could hear you scream in space oh yeah in space, uh-huh. everyone can hear you scream. Yeah. How does that change things? There's a lot of fun what ifs. What if the uh, you know the eggs in the first movie never burst? And be like, oh. They just have a nice trip. There's, yeah, it's just a great trip. They get where they're going, where they need to go, and everything works out. There's a lot of fun scenes you say, what if that went the other way? Right. Okay, next up we have Weapon X-Men. So this is going to be a mini-series that is actually spinning out of that original X-Men one shot we had a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and in it, it was, it was weird. Cause we were kind of like, what is this? You know, it's a one shot, that kind of thing. But that was actually setting up this, uh, because I forgot exactly how it ended, but they brought onslaught back in it. Uh, so this was going to be written by Christos Gage and, uh, Yildiroy, uh, Yildiroy Sinar is doing the art, which I really yeah, like, I like his him. work. Um, and it's, we had, I believe, like uh, Rachel Gray in the previous one as the Phoenix. And in this, she is recruiting Wolverines throughout the multiverse to face off against Onslaught. Now, it seems like a weird choice of like all the people to face Onslaught. Why would you pick Wolverine? Well, he's, you know, he's almost he's indestructible what and, and if you have a maybe just by himself that'd be weird but there's a whole bunch of wolverines yeah apparently so you know yeah so it's the phoenix calls on all these wolverines so you can see we've got the age of apocalypse wolverine we've got zombie wolverine we've got old man logan the other one you'll see on one of the other covers <laughs> is very weird we're trying to place it looks vaguely familiar yeah. Uh, and you can see that in the red part, that looks like maybe she's going to be our lead Wolverine yeah. in it. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, but I'm excited to see what this is all about because it's still very kind of hazy on what the storyline is going to be other than they're going to be taking on Onslaught. And, you know, why? You know, why this series? Is this, is this going to have something to do with the fall of X or is this just kind of off to the side? Yeah, or? yeah. Anytime something X comes up right now, it's like, okay, yeah. what's... I mean, normally I wouldn't question it, but there's a lot going. Like the X-Men have a full play right now. You know, Krakow was gone and their Cyclops is on trial and all this stuff. So I don't really wonder where this fits in with all that, if it does. Yeah. But it's great to see Old Man Logan back too. Yeah. What a great character. So this is our A cover for that, which I really like. We also have this fantastic John Boy Myers cover, which I would love to see him draw a, uh, a Wolverine title. Yeah. We have a Mark Brooks headshot cover. You'll be seeing a couple of these later on. And we have an X-Men 97 Goblin Queen. Well, that one actually is not the Goblin Queen variant like it says it is. This is kind of the team variant. Yeah, and there's the Wolverine sort of. Yeah. Y- you know, the, the, he's, he's huffing and puffing yeah. in the background. That is a up. retired Wolverine, I guess. <laughs> Very tired. And next is Duke number three. Uh, the first two were fantastic, sold out super quick. Um, and then at the end of issue number two, you know, Duke found himself captured by uh, Stalker and Rock and Roll. And he is now deep in the bowels of. I don't know if it's the pit yet, or he's in some very, you know, um, very secure, uh, you know, holding facility. And um, he's the most wanted man in the world, essentially. But everyone he's, everybody seems to prefer him dead over alive. And he's going to have to sort of get out and continue his search for answers about what it was he saw. We know he saw Starscream, but he doesn't know what it was yet. And uh, if you read issue number two, the last page reveal is now on the cover. He might get some help from the Baroness, which is very cool. It's really interesting. We were talking about this before of like, how does this Duke become the leader of this? Considering everyone hates him and wants to kill him. How is he going to turn around and he's like, I guess they're going to kind of 
reluctantly follow him at some but point. But I think that's a cool story though, because he's at the he's at the bottom right now, yeah. and he's eventually going to ascend to the top of GI Joe. What is that story? That's what we're gonna get, and yeah. I'm excited to see his rise to fame. Maybe he takes out all the bad Transformers, and they're like, "You have what it takes. You should lead us." You know. And then he whispers, yo, Joe. And then <laughs> Doug, that sounds great. <laughs> it's all out. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great series. We have this uh, A cover here, and then we have a uh, Declan Shalvey variant as well. Just, I didn't even notice. Is he on top of a Transformer? Uh, I don't think so. It kind of looks like the eye, and then, I don't know. Maybe, but, well, it looks more like a Gundam. <laughs> I was just thinking of Gundam. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that's the third crossover we yeah. have coming into this. Okay, next up we have other number ones. There's a few other number ones we wanted to mention, starting with Giant Size Spider Gwen. This is just continuing the giant sized, uh, I guess, it's celebrating, I think, 50 years of Marvel making giant sized yeah. issues. Um, Which it, really just became annuals back in yeah, the you know they they, they, they did these figuring out a name for what yeah there was there was, was like they did king size and a giant size and eventually rolled into annuals back in the seventies. But it's fun. They're doing these. They're I mean as far as we've read so far, they're not connected to each other. Nope. They're just taking characters and giving them a giant size yeah. treatment. So this time it's Spider Gwen. We're going to be seeing uh, her, but it does isn't continuity because it does talk about uh, after. Spider Gwen Smash, which is the mm. the miniseries is going on now. Um, her life's going pretty well until uh, some of the Carnage symbiote that's been lurking inside of Mary Jane since way back uh, start to rearing its ugly head, and uh, that draws the attention of uh, Doc Ops' adopted son Orlando Octavius. So very interesting one there, and we know we are getting a. Spider Gwen ongoing series where she's in six one six. Yeah, so I wonder if this is maybe gonna bridge some of that a little bit. Maybe, but like you know, we only gotten one so far. We got the giant size uh, Spider Man with Miles Morales, yeah. and that story was pretty much self contained. So I don't know how much you know uh, the Fantastic Four one's coming out pretty soon. I don't know how much these are gonna lead into the current stories, but it might like maybe this is how she gets stuck because the that new ongoing is like oh she's trapped in six one six maybe this maybe it happens here yeah it should to see and I just love more Spider Gwen this is our A cover for that we also have a Dave Barden Deadly Foes variant very cool and we have a Kai Zama variant which she's very much doing a Shira yeah. there with a sword and everything and I love that. You took this one for this show because I botched it so bad on Wednesday. Oh, this is the one that I really, I, I completely screwed up. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but I yeah. couldn't let that happen. Couldn't again. have happen again, yeah. All right, so next is a book called Washed in the Blood. This is the first of a three issue series written by Kevin Rodatelli, and the art is by Rob Cannon and Costas uh, Pantulis. So this is described as okay. This I had to write this down. I'm going to read this. This is described. This is from Massive, so the uh, publishing arm of whatnot. Um, this is described as Massive's take on Black Mirror. Okay, I'm interested. And it's inspired by Mad Max, Hellraiser, Fallout, and the filmography of David Cronenberg. There's going to be a lot of meat. That's a lot, <laughs> yeah. A lot of eyeballs where they don't belong and, and, and gross stuff. Yeah, so that's a lot going on right there. Uh, it says it's in a, it takes place in a frozen post-apocalyptic wasteland. There's a young cult survivor who hears the voice of the self-proclaimed god of guns. Okay. Uh, but like any human would, he's hypnotized by the prospect of power by listening to this divine freak. It's what this list... This is crazy. Uh, uh, there, he's going to go on a path of salvation that's paved with love, turmoil, and mostly death. And there are some preview pages on Previews World. If you just want to, If you want to go ahead and see how out there this is going to be, you can see a few pages now on PreviewsWorld.com. So... A lot going on, yeah. uh, and the covers are crazy. I will show you, but uh, yeah, this is this is definitely interesting. So we have this uh, A cover by Jorge Corona. We have a um, our C cover by oh, this is a movie poster homage. I don't know what movie poster that is. Mm -mm. Um, and then there is a, a meme variant. Oh yeah, the meme variant. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the Wolverine. <laughs> That's got to be. You, you have to get it just for that. <laughs> Like, what a great well, use of... I think, was it Mondo that even made that a figure that came yes. with Wolverine and he has the picture? Yeah. Of, is it Scott and Gene? Uh, I think picture? so, yeah. That's great. It's, it's so I don't good. know that I've seen that on an, on an official like comic book uh, cover I, before. I don't know if I've seen that homage yeah, yet. It's wonderful. 
Okay, next up we have a one shot from the Fire and Ice uh, saga that's going on. It's Fire and Ice, uh, Tigra one shot. So the current Fire and Ice series going on by Bill Willingham is still telling kind of a prequel to the film, the classic uh, rotoscoped uh, 80s film. And this is spotlighting Tigra, who is kind of a fan favorite character in there. Uh, this is also going to be written by Bill Willingham, and the uh, art is by Gabriel Di Carlo. And it's kind of one of the it's a it's a tale of a runaway bride type thing because when her people uh, need to kind of uh, submit their loyalty to another kingdom uh, it, by marriage, uh, I think Tigra's father puts her up to be married to maybe the prince of the other kingdom. But she's uh, very uh, rebellious, and she runs away from it. So it'll be a fun one-shot story to kind of fill in more of this Fire and Ice um, universe. Yeah. Uh, so we've got some really nice covers for this, too. I believe this is a Dan Panosian. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, love his art. And then we have a... Well, we've got a uh, Megan Hetrick variant as well. And before we get on to notable twos and threes, just wanted to remind you, like always, head over to infinityflux.net right now. Like we said at the beginning of the show, you can follow along, pre-order all the books we're talking about, browse around, there's still plenty of things on there that we're not talking about. You may find something that you care about even more. You can pre-order it, and everything you pre-order, you get 10% off of, so don't miss out on any of that good stuff. And just a quick reminder of that promo code, mm -hmm. I love Flux at checkout. If it's your first time, your first time you're ordering, uh, using that code, you get a, an additional 10% off. So just all around great stuff right there. Now, moving into notable twos and threes, there's a couple of these. This is Suicide Squad Kill Arkham Asylum number two of five. Now, this is a preview comic, uh, pre, or, uh, I'm sorry, prequel comic. Uh, that, that is set before the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League video game, which is out today. Oh, uh, it was out in early access a few days ago, but today is the official release date for that game. We have not gotten issue number one of this yet. I think that comes soon. It's got to yeah. be soon, because this issue comes out on March 5th, so it's got to be sometime soon. But like I said, a prequel to the video game. <clears throat> so before they take on the corrupted Justice League in that game, they have to escape Arkham Asylum first. Now, reading the solicitation on this, I, I wonder if maybe these five... Well, there's only four characters. I was thinking maybe each issue focus on one character because this one was very Deadshot heavy. Mm. It talked about how, you know, Deadshot's got to escape and there's a whole bunch of guards between him and Freedom and his plan to get through them is to kill them all. But it was very, very Deadshot heavy. So I don't know if maybe the first issue might... Or maybe the first issue set it up and then each issue is a character. I'm not really sure. Because I read it when we got an early review copy was very like... Hey, let's set the scene yeah. for Amanda Waller now running, you know, Arkham Asylum and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. So, but I could see it focusing on a different character each one after that. Yeah. So I get, but you know, regardless, uh, this this series is about them getting out of Arkham Asylum so that they can then go to do what they do in the game. And um, this every issue of this comes with a digital code for the game. The digital code in this one is for the Great White Shark Weapon Doll. So I haven't played the game yet, so I don't really know what that is. But um, you know, if you're if you're playing the game, you want to get the codes, you can get this and get that code for that item. Uh, so this is our uh, A cover by Dan Panosian, who did the uh, Fire and Ice cover a minute ago, and then we have an uh, Ariel Olivetti variant as well with uh, King Shark. Next up, we have Hack Slash Back to School. Uh, this is the uh, Zoe Thorogood written and drawn book it kind of had a little bit of a break i saw her posting of like hey sorry for the delays but i'm trying to make this as good as possible mm -hmm. and i feel like just in that amount of time more and more people are now like super fans of thoroughgood's art and everything uh so you didn't miss it if you're getting all of these it was just a little delayed but we've got uh it coming back for you so this is our a cover and then we also have a vecchio cover as well Next up, we got cool covers. Like we said, this is where a lot of the DC fell this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, starting off with some of the coolest covers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Alan Scott, Green Lantern, number five of six. 
Uh, issue number four was my favorite issue of the series so far. It was phenomenal. Uh, we get this really cool um, red lantern uh, cover by Brandon Peterson right here. The solicitation doesn't really give us a whole lot of information. Uh, you know, we know after reading issue number four that basically everything has been revealed now. All the mysteries have been answered. And Green Lantern and Red Lantern are just going at it. They're just going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And what is that, you know, who's going to come out on top? What is that going to mean for the Green Lantern? That kind of thing. Uh, but this red, I love this design for Red Lantern. And he is front and center on this cover right here. Uh, and then there is a, a J Hero variant as well. So two very awesome covers yeah. with both of the main characters in this. I love them both. Next up, we've got Amazon's Attack number five. Uh, some great coverage for this. In this one, also, Nubia and her sisters find themselves in the crosshairs of Peacemaker. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. I mean, now, Peacemaker went from, uh, most people have no idea who he is, so he pops up in a lot of stuff He's now. in a lot of places. You know, he he fought with Nightwing last yeah. week, and he's... Uh, but the, in... the way you stop him is you just turn his helmet right. backwards yep. as Nightwing Night uh, proved. Nightwing needs, just needs to put that in the group chat. Hey, <laughs> just turn his helmet around if you... They have a group chat of like... Someone says, hey, anyone tussled with this villain? So <laughs> right. it's like, yeah, last week, Mr. Freeze, just pull the plug on yeah. one of his mm -hmm. hoses. He'll be good. Bane just cut his venom thing. And, yeah, yeah, I love that. I would love to read a, <laughs> a series like that. So this is the Irvin Rodriguez variant. And we have the Vasco Jijorov variant with Cassie Sandsmark. That's nice. Uh, next is Detective Comics number 1082. This is uh, continuing the Elegy of Sand uh, storyline, which is the uh, which is Act Three of the, uh, this big, huge Gotham Nocturne storyline has been going on. Uh, Batman's hallucinatory trek across the desert between two worlds because this is interesting. It says becomes more dangerous as he finds himself himself face to face with. Dot, dot, dot. You'll just have to read to find out. So I don't know who it's going to be. Please. But also, while he's trying to get the, you know, he's trying to become not possessed by the Orgums back in Gotham, the Orgums are continuing to basically hypnotize everybody in the city into believing that Batman never existed. And, and it's already working. They're like, it seems like I remember. Wasn't there a guy? No, that's just a myth. So it's, it's whatever they're doing, it's working. <clears throat> so we have this really cool Ricardo Federici variant. And then there is a Frank Avia variant. Wasn't there a man called Bat something? Yeah. That that actually is what it's like. They're like, ah, yeah. oh, it seems like there was, but that's crazy. Next up, we've got some really cool Power Girl covers. And this issue sounds really fun because the citizens of Metropolis are missing. And it's because there's a new street drug that literally transports you back to a simpler age, like medieval times. Oh, I was going to so, say, like, I would, I want that, like, maybe to go back to the 80s. I don't want to go to medieval I mean, times. It's like simpler times, medieval times. Like, yeah. I don't think there's anything simple going there's on nothing. back then. It was uh, horrific. <clears throat> maybe it takes you to medieval times, the restaurant. Oh, yeah. You know, and you get, like, a chicken around, room, yeah. you know, rooting for the dragon team or right. something. Uh, but that sounds really fun. It, it didn't re really say how Power Girl's involved in this, but uh, I'm sure she's going to have to maybe time travel She's herself. at Medieval Times having dinner when everybody just pops in. <laughs> she's like, what's going on? <laughs> so we've got some great coverage for this. This is the Brad Walker cover. There's also the Laura Braga sweater weather co mm -hmm. cover, which looks pretty cold. Not for her. She's Kryptonian, so That's she's That's true. Right. The sun gives her strength. That's so right. She's actually getting stronger yeah. there. Uh, and then we have this Carla Cohen cover, and this is actually a foil cover. So, super cool. It's interesting that it's like this issue gets a foil cover. You know, it's not like a, a number one or anything All like right, that. Yeah. So, uh, but it's a great cover. And next is Green Arrow number nine. Um, this one sounds cool because it's, you know, there's fallout from, from Beast World. Um, Green Arrow finally finds Amanda Waller. He's been looking for her for a while. He finds her at her new hideout, which I wonder if that's the same place that Nightwing got into. Yeah. Um, and he, he demands answers. Why have you been messing with my family? But um, what will he do when she offers him the deal of a lifetime? I don't know. I mean, he's he really wants to get her, so it has to. If he's not gonna get her when he comes face to face with her, it must be a pretty sweet deal. Okay. So we have this the uh, limited arrow refills. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, Dustin. This is a Dustin Nguyen cover right here, and then there is a Nicholas Draper Ivy Black History Month variant with uh, Connor Hawk. Cool. 
Next up, we've got Harley Quinn. This is Harley Quinn number 37. This is a Jorge Fornes cover. I uh, just thought it was really cool. I would try to tell you about what the issue is about, but all of these solicitations of Harley are written yeah. by Harley, mm-hmm. and they're very hard to decipher. Mm-hmm. So uh, just thought it was a cool cover, kind of a different uh, different kind of cover yeah. by Fornes. And next is uh, World Tree number eight. So we just got number seven this week. Um, this one... You know, they asked the question, uh, Gabriel Winter, he knew that the end of the internet was inevitable, uh, but how did he know that the Lane family would be at the center of the conflict? And the FBI agent, it's uh, Siobhan Silk, she's been searching for fear, um, and she's almost found her, but what she stumbles across is worse than she ever imagined. I don't know how things can get worse in this book, yeah. but I uh, but, uh, can't wait to find out. And this is a uh, Mueller variant. Very creepy. Mm-hmm. Next up, we got Sensational She-Hulk issue number six. This one sounds really fun. Uh, this cover was actually supposed to be the cover for like issue five, I think, but oh. it switched along with the storyline. So they kind of flip-flopped it around. Hmm. Uh, that was even in one of the notes in the solicitation huh. for this. But uh, we have not got issue five yet, which comes out this coming yeah. week. Uh, but the solicitation gives away something kind of interesting that maybe She-Hulk might be offered a spot on the avengers so we'll have to read to find out how that goes down i hope she accepts because i would love to see her with the current avengers roster because they're great and she's great and they would be great together you know it's also weird because she's been on the avengers before how do you lose your membership like do you want to be in the avengers she's like i thought i still was you know like as a you know a a backup or something well yeah like what happened you know when jason aaron's run she was on that yeah she was like really hulked out yeah why? Why does she? Why does she leave? They take your card away. Oh yeah. They change the locks or something. She didn't pay her dues. But also in this one, Jen and Jack of Hearts go on a space vacation. So that's what this cover is. Hmm. So this is actually our A cover by Jen Bartel, which is beautiful. We also have a Ben Harvey cover that's very funny. Feels like it really captures kind of the the spirit of She Hulk. We have a Nick Klein Stormbreakers variant showing the action side of She Hulk. And we have a Mark Brooks headshot variant where you'll see a couple more of these. Yep. And next is Avengers number 11. Another headshot right there, Mark Brooks. Uh, I wonder like, if Mark Brooks and Todd Nock get together to talk about their headshot <laughs> variants, you know. Uh, but this one, the Avengers call on none other than Edwin Jarvis to help them, uh, with, you know, to assist them in their headquarters, the impossible city that's up there floating in space. They're gonna they're gonna get Jarvin's help to uh, to manage that I guess so that should be fun and so we wanted to show you this Mark Brooks headshot variant of Black Knight and there's uh, Captain America number seven the Mark Brooks headshot variant of of course Captain America um, now this is the start of a new story arc uh, Cap uh, he thought that his fight with Asmodee the the demon Asmodee is was won um, but he meets a new ally named Lila who is the guardian of the mysterious front door cabaret. <laughs> And he learns that Asmodee's defeat has unleashed a new threat that only he can stand against. So uh, that should be pretty cool if you've been reading that. There's a brand new story arc starting up here. Uh, So we got that cover. And then there's the Lucas Warnick Stormbreakers variant with Squirrel Girl. So maybe he teams up with Squirrel Girl to to take on this new thing. We can only hope. Yeah. Next up, we got a couple of Star Wars. So this is Star Wars number 44. I believe this is just the A cover for that. Uh, In this... uh, we're kind of getting back to the previous storyline with Lando, where now Lando is going on trial uh, in front of the Republic. So that'll be really interesting here. Plus, I just like this cover with, you know, a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is our A cover. We also have a uh, uh, Jan Dersima Women's History Month variant. We also have a Wingard Rebels 10th Anniversary with Hera. And then we also have Star Wars High Republic number four. And this one, Keeve Trennis, uh, has disobeyed orders and entered Nile space. You know, If you're following along, you know how big of a deal that is, how hard it is, and kind of how she uh, broke the rules. They could have really used one of those hyperdrives to get across into Nile space, but she took it for herself. Mm. So this is uh, the variant, um, the Nico Suian uh, connecting cover with a uh, skier and then we also have a ken lashley black history month variant with uh i love seeing uh the char hound right here yeah. uh just with uh, zeb and ember very cool and next is thanos number four <laughs> uh, um 
Uh, so what? yeah, this is this is the upskirt variant. No, I don't. That's not really what it is. This is it's the Hildebrand you variant. Get flagged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this whole series so far has been about Thanos wanting to uh, reclaim Death's love. I guess you could say. But in this so this issue, is picture deck, sir. That's right. <laughs> He's like, do you love me now? Um, well, no, because Death rejects him, probably oh, because he sent this picture. And it says he doesn't take it well. And this is interesting. It says, what follows is the most consequential fight in the history of the Marvel Universe. That is... That's a bold that's, statement. That's a bold claim, Cobb. Let's see bold. how that works out for you. You know, <laughs> um, But yeah, so we have this, uh, we have this Hildebrandt variant that's a very uh, interesting camera angle. Uh, and then there is the Justin Mason uh, snap variant. Next up, we've got X-Men number 32. I really like the X-Men stuff. We talk about it every time about the fall of X and some really cool storylines. And this one sounds awesome because it's mostly, uh, which I didn't really know they were like best friends or whatever, but it talks about Kate Pride and Ileana Rasputin uh, are really good friends. And they're just going to go fight some uh, anti-mutant haters. So that just sounds like a good time. Yeah. I don't even need any dialogue. I nope. just need a bunch of punching. Uh, but we've got this great cover right here. This is the Anadito variant with magic. And we also have the Mark Brooks headshot variant with Savage Land Rogue. Because you got the headband. Mm -hmm. And then Venom number 31. This is another of the Hildebrandt Marvel Masterpiece variants. Um, this is also the start of a new story arc called Flesh and Blood. And Carnage is back uh, in this series. He's more dangerous than ever. We're, we uh, are seeing what he's doing over in his own series right now. But he comes over into the Venom book, and he sets his sights on Venom. And will Dylan Brock be able to stop him because he doesn't have his dad there to help him out? We know that Carnage is more powerful than ever. We had the Death of the Venomverse series where Carnage went up against a whole bunch of Venoms. So I don't really know how one Venom is going to... I don't know. I don't, you know. But I guess we'll have to see how it all plays out. Uh, and yeah, this is the really cool Hildebrandt variant. Next up, we've just got a really cool cover for Red Sonia. This is Red Sonia number eight. This is the Barenz cover. And these series, of course, Dynamite always has a bunch of covers, but they have some really, really good ones. So this is a cool cover for that. And kind of on the same wavelength, we have Conan number eight, uh, which continues the story arc about kind of Conan post the death of Bolit and, and how mm -hmm. that affects him and everything. But uh, I thought this one was really cool too. And this is the A cover by... Uh, Eisenicki. Next up, we've got graphic novels and more. We've got some really interesting stuff on this one this time, so let's get into it. Uh, this is the second printing of Moon Man number one, which just came out uh, this week. Yeah. Uh, and they're already on a second printing. I didn't read it yet, but you seem to like it pretty yeah, it's well. Yeah, really cool, written by Kid Cudi. Um, I think this is uh, definitely going to be one that, like, people, fans and everything are going to hear about and then go and, and to their comic yeah. stores and get, so... Uh, I think this has got a, a long shelf life. Yeah, it's probably good to do the second. It's smart to do the second printing now yeah. because, like you said, people are gonna like word of mouth and all that stuff, and it's gonna be gone. And but now you can get the second print, and I think that cover is um isn't that the same as the? It might the, be a different color for the the title. Okay, but I, I'm not positive. It doesn't look too much different no, from the <laughs> from the first issue or first printing. Uh, next up, we have Thrawn Alliance is number one. We completely sold out of this and all the variants and everything. Uh, great adaptation of the Thrawn Alliance book by Timothy Zahn. Uh, so if you missed it or you want to get all these covers, Thrawn is hotter, leaner, and meaner than ever. So <laughs> been working out. Up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, next is the Jurassic League trade paperback. This is going to be $16.99. Collects Jurassic League number one through six. So if you missed that miniseries, you can get it all collected. This comes out on April 16th. Uh, and, you know, this is basically the Justice League, but dinosaurs. You really don't need any of sells sales itself. Pitch than nope, that. that's it. Next up, these are really interesting. So, this is Marvel Art of David Nakayama. Uh, these are a little pricey. They're $75. But for big art buffs, and if you're a big David Nakayama fan, uh, you'll definitely want to pick this up. I collect a lot of art books and different kind of artist spotlight books. And this one sounds awesome because not only does it have kind of his standard covers that he's done. This also has art from, it says his DVD, which I'm not sure. I didn't know he had a DVD, maybe an art DVD. Interesting. Um, has What's you, a DVD for the kids out there? <laughs> dub video dub. Oh, yeah. Um, this also has, if you didn't know, if you're uh, a fan of Marvel Legends, the action figures, he does the box art for those mm -hmm. now. Uh, so it's going to have a lot of that. 
exclusives and rare store exclusives, which, you know, you may have only been able to order from the a certain store's website or whatever. It'll collect some of that art here too. So sounds really cool if you're kind of a completionist, you want to get everything David Nakayama has done. You can see it all right here. Uh, so this is uh, the main cover uh, with Scarlet Witch. And then there is a direct market edition, which was the cover to Spider-Man Smash. Yeah. Uh, and both of these are $75. Same thing on the inside, but just the different, different covers. covers. Uh, next, we're getting a uh, facsimile edition of Wolverine number one. Now, this is not the four-issue Frank Miller miniseries. This is the 1988 uh, Wolverine written by Cl Chris Claremont. Uh, the start of the ish of the series that ran for like 180-something yeah. issues all through the 90s and into the 2000s. This is the beginning of all of that. Uh, and this is the facsimile, just reprinting all that with all the ads and everything. Very cool. Next up, we have the Hellboy Artist Collection Richard Corbin hardcover. So they've done the Hellboy collection that collects like all of the... Um, like the main run, they did Hellboy in Hell. These are really nice. They're oversized. They've got kind of that cloth mm. um, spine on yeah. them. I've been getting as many of these as I can because they look great. They're bigger, so you can see a lot more of the art. And this one now, instead of being like the main one, is collecting all of the art that Richard Corbin did for Hellboy. So if you're not familiar with Richard Corbin, look it up. Very distinct style. Of course, he did this cover here, but really interesting look. So this is... Uh, collecting a bunch of mini series and one shots that he did the art for, including Crooked Man, which is what the next Hellboy movie is based on. Oh. So if you want to get kind of a, a look at that, check out Crooked Man. It is very, very creepy. You've also got Hellboy in Mexico, where he becomes a luchador, which nice. is a fantastic story. <laughs> the Bride of Hell and so much more. Um, and this is forty nine ninety nine. Well worth it. These are very like nice, you know bookshelf books yeah. uh, with their cloth spines and all of that. And we also have another one of my favorite series. Uh, this is Hack Slash Deluxe Volume 4. That's funny because it's like, oh, it's Volume 4. I can't jump in here. But this actually collects 1 through 11 of Volume 2. All of these are very, like, standalone, for the most part, storylines. Uh, if you're enjoying that Zoe Thorogood one right here that, that we talked about earlier and you want to try it out, I, this is another great place to start because you this also has the uh, miniseries Hatchet Slash crossover with the horror movie character Hatchet. Okay. Uh, and it has stories involving Bomb Queen, which is another Image Comics character. Uh, just a lot of fun stuff, plus Zombies vs. Cheerleaders crossover, so... Uh, if you've never tried out Hack Slash, I just continue to recommend it because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of good stories. And I don't think I realized that there was already three of these out. Yeah. Why did I not get those? Because I would love to have just... Because Hack Slash is great because they're, they're just their own stories. There's yeah. not a big, huge, overarching story that kind runs The for, longest story is maybe like four or five issues. Yeah. Like one trade's worth of a, of a story. Very Hellboy-esque. You just pick up and read a story. It doesn't matter yeah. in what order. So, yeah, I need to go track down those other three. I'd love yeah, that they're very really cool. And these also, he does like Kickstarters for them. Uh, but they're the same thing. They just have a different cover. Nice. And then they release like this. So it's not like you're missing out on anything. Huh, I had no idea those existed. So, uh, very cool in there. And this is... $49.99. That is it for comics from the future. It wasn't our biggest week. There was still a lot of good stuff, but some of the biggest stuff up front with Ultimate X-Men and, and uh, the Weapon X-Men and yeah. a whole lot of X-Men. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Remember to head over to infinityflux.net where you can pre-order these books we just talked about. Your pre-orders are due Sunday. Uh, I believe it's Sunday by 9 o'clock to make sure you don't miss out on anything. That's when they shut the door and we can't submit any new orders. And that's our orders locked in until these books come out, which that's why we need to get these orders in so early. Uh, so you don't miss out on anything. That's it, it makes it a little hard. You know, if you go a couple weeks and you hear more and you're like, oh, that would have been cool to get at that point. You just got to hope that your store ordered more of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I believe that is it for it. this time. Yep. So remember to like and subscribe. Do all that good stuff that people always tell you to do. And we like it as well. And stay tuned for our show coming up on Monday. We'll be going over some of the biggest books coming out next week, including Ultimate Black Panther. Uh, we've got Thundercats. Thundercats. There's some great stuff coming out. It's a big out. week next week. Yeah, so yeah. you don't want to miss that. And until next time, see, see ya. ya.